sorry for the inconvenience cause and uh, you know it's India and uh, we have power issues here so we just got disconnected and that really disconnected my uh, internet and uh, sorry about it uh, let me quickly uh, you know wait for it because I have shared this new link with now with everyone so let me just wait for them to join. So, so let me just wait for you know everyone to join because uh, there was a power cut and uh, in between my class was interrupted so I cannot help guys that's how India is all about wonderful country uh, so let me just quickly 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 share links with my students that they come back and uh, we'll then start coloring it. So nevertheless, let's just quickly, quickly, quickly send it to everyone. Just let me just quickly, quickly, quickly share. Okay, so yeah, hello. 
So most of them are back now and I'll start back. Sorry for the inconvenience caused and uh, uh, this is how India is all about. So you have power cuts and uh, I think everyone understands how it go goes here. So anyway, so it was good. But whatever happens in life is all about good. So it all happens for a reason. It's always a good thing. So... So meanwhile, the one which we are waiting for has now happened. Now my canvas is drawn to the second layer. So without, you know, keeping you on waiting, so let me just quickly turn on the camera so that I record it from the bird's eye view and uh, set it back to a mode where you can see and follow and we'll keep going. So that's all about, you know, being passionate about painting. So if you're passionate about painting, you will not stop painting even if there are barriers in between. Exactly, kids. So we are going to start our task again. So now it's time to pick up your brush. And the brush which I'm using now, which I'll be using now is number six. So number six is not very thick and not too thin as well. So I'm using a brush number six. You can also go for four because we wanted to draw branches and uh, the branches have to be uh, thick at the bottom and thin at the top. So it all depends. You, you can use two brushes, one for the darker, you know, at the lower portion of the branches and use a little more, uh, you know, uh, I think you can use number two, number one later for the edges of the branches, but I'll be using the same brush. Or the entire branches so I've picked my brush now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my black color uh, you can use uh, you know a tube color but I'm using this fabric this by the brand fabric Rill. and this is more a thin than the consistency of what we have in a tube color tube colors are more thicker and I'm using this because I want my branches to flow and I want to do it quickly so, and in one single stroke, so I'm using this. So grab your black color and the brush and we'll be ready to start. So keep going. So I'll take black now. You can watch me first and then I'll wait for some time for you to do it together. Let me put it more closer to the camera and then I'll start making the branches. So there's no hard and fast rule of making the branches. It just gets thinner when it goes to the top. Just remember, you just have to go with the flow in painting. It doesn't matter if your painting is not looking same as mine. You don't need to make it exactly the replica of it. If you can make one, it's really nice. But if you are not able to make exact replica, it's okay. You can go with your ideas. That's all about art. Like you always make different paintings. So it's like even an artist, if they make the same painting twice, there is going to be a difference. That's all human is all about. We are not machines, we are human beings. And uh, every time when we do something, it comes up with a different finish and always with a better finish. So you make sure that whenever you do something twice, the second time when you do it, it should always look more beautiful, more perfect than what you did before. And if you do so, you are on the right track. So that's the same thing with your studies also, isn't it? When we get in homework, when teacher teaches you in a class, you do something and when you go home, they expect you to do it in a more better way. So that's all about learning kids and you are in a stage, you are in a phase of life where you need to, you know, keep doing things time and again and that's going to big, bring perfection in you and... You are really going to enjoy what you do. So perfect. So let me just quickly finish the branches. So as I'm going to the top, if you can see, these are a bit thinner branches and the one in the base is a bit thick ones. So I'm just drawing it.
Mm -hmm. I don't want to draw too many branches, but nevertheless, I want to fill this area. So I'll just do a few more. Mm -hmm. I think it's looking empty here. So let me just come here and make this thicker. Okay, let me do that. So, I'm done with the branches. So, this is just a branch. Now, again, I will tell you, it's all about how you want to draw, what you want to draw, and, you know, what you are planning to draw. So, the painting is already looking beautiful. If you want to leave it at this point, you can really leave it at this point. But if you want to go ahead and learn a few more things about it, we'll do it. So like if you have seen in my painting what we did, it's already looking beautiful. I can leave it this way, but I also wanted you to uh, see how we use toothpick for making the leaves. So I will not uh, skip that part. I'll do that for you and uh, see. So this is done. We'll give... Two more minutes for this to dry because I don't want the branches to get merged with uh, the leaf. So I'll just keep it to dry. And this portion, why always make sure that you keep a branch uh, which is, you know, um, horizontal to the base because this is the place where I'm going to draw a two tiny birds, love birds, and it's really going to look beautiful here. And uh, rest of the part, I can draw the leaves. So for drawing leaves, what we'll do the dark the branches are already in darker shade so what we'll do we'll take black but not jet black we'll mix black with some brown brown so the brown will be more and a less of black we'll mix it together don't take black too much and then we'll draw the leaves so that it is like a, the color difference has to be there between the leaves and the branches or you can also go for with the entire black but uh, i want to mix and always remember, uh, an artist never reveals the truth. But the truth is, they never use the you know uh, base exact color which is there in the tube. They never use if they say Persian blue, they never use take the Persian blue and just pour it on the painting. They always mix that color with some other color and then bring their colors because that's going to give a unique finish to a painting. And that was a super secret which I revealed. So let's do that because I want you also to learn the same. My intention here is to, you know, just pass on what I know so that, you know, you get benefited with it. So now it's time to, so you can take a color plate or I prefer using my plate, which is at home because acrylic painting is like, uh, you can reuse a plate, you can just scrap it and use it. So I just use a plate, plain plate. So what I'll do on my plate, I'm going to take some black and brown as I promised. So I'll take burnt thinner brown. I've a huge you know uh, pack of this brown because I keep using it in my painting throughout my painting most of the painting so we'll take brown and then I'm going to take some black and blend black and black to bl blend black and brown together okay so so I'm going to you can use a brush to mix it so what I will do is I will just quickly grab my brush and mix these two colors together. When you blend black with brown, it's like take less or less brown, black and more of brown so that, you know, that shade becomes lighter. So your leaf looks beautiful. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just pick this color on the toothpick like this. Hold this toothpick from one edge and just draw the leaf much of color so. so just do not take too much of color just a little dab dab i'm not taking color multiple times i just took color once and i'm using the same one still the same i have not taken the color again the reason why i'm doing so is i don't want that color to look dark i just want the lighter shade of leaves one of the reason and I'm not pressing it too hard I'm just willing to have that natural natural you know uh, look of those leaves so. just 
moving it this way. It should really look beautiful. Yeah. So I think my painting is already looking very, very beautiful. How about yours? I would love to see the painting which you are making along with me so that I can put in in my Insta and, and also recommend you if it needs some correction and appreciate it. I always appreciate everybody's work because you're already putting in a lot of effort on the Sunday afternoon painting with me. I know it's a lazy winter days and everybody wishes to just sleep, but you're still sitting with me painting. So that's already a good thing you're doing. So stay motivated and we will do our painting. So see how beautiful this looks. Wow, isn't it? So now what we're going to do is we are just going to draw our birds as promised the love birds so how does a love bird look like so it's always like the head is a round dot just a round dot here and then the body goes and then it's like a leaf structure and then when it comes in the bottom it's this way similarly draw the other bird here with the body and I'm drawing it in a side because I want this both birds to look like they are talking to each other because you know that's going to give a good finish to your painting and love is in the air because you know Valentine's Day is in the corner so everybody wants to paint something for their sweetheart, for the loved ones and for kids. It's your mom. So you need to make something for your mom and dad. So yes. So this is how. Dun, 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 and the painting is ready. And now it's time to do what? The thing I love most is to just remove the masking tape so because when you remove your masking tape the really the real painting you know you get to see the real painting and always remember there's a technique of removing the masking tape it's always like tear it from the this edge of the painting let me bring it close to the camera and show it to you so what i'm doing is i am just holding it from here this portion Take the edge and make it. Make sure that you put it outward from your painting, not inwards. I have to take, pull it outward because if you pull it outward, it's going to scrap. Like it should go this way, not towards your painting, outward. So always remember this technique of removing a masking tape. So what we do is we pick this up. Let me place it down. Otherwise, I'll make a mistake and I don't want to do that. So let me just pull this see, outward. So this is outward of my painting not inwards so this is outward and this is inward so i'm moving it towards the outside of the painting and that's really going to give a nice fine finish and see when you remove it outward it gives a nice clean you know edges to your painting and that's something we are looking for so always make sure that you remove it outward so let me just remove this yeah and now the final side and it's really going to look beautiful and do not worry like if any portion of the painting you haven't followed or there is something which you are, have missed maybe because of the power cut which i had at my end or it did not dry or something you can uh, follow that again let me just remove my tripod Go to the side and uh, with a close look so that we get to understand what we did, how we painted, and how is it looking. Dun, 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 and see how beautiful this is looking. So I think, guys, this is looking more beautiful than what I had uh, 
put on my thumbnail before. So yeah, there was one bud and now it's two here. So we are going, growing now. So see, this is looking so beautiful. The idea here was to get the texture. So if you, if I bring it close, you will see there is a nice texture in the bottom. If you can see, see the texture is there. And acrylic is all about texture, you know. You can, when it, if it dries, and if you are really doing well in this, you can just go and get this framed and uh, it will look beautiful in your wall. So that's the benefit of acrylic color. Whenever you do something and you really like it, you can frame it, get it framed and keep it with you for a longer time. And uh, see how beautiful this is looking. So again, I told you, you just have to learn the technique. And once you are a master of the technique, you can change it. You can uh, do whatever you want to and you can go with your flow of painting. So like I said, in this painting, you could have also gone for without the leaves or as I promised, I wanted to show how I make leaves. And that's why that's the reason I went for the leaves. So I have used leaves. You can, you can go with leaves, without leaves. And really, it really looks cute, beautiful. This kind of color shade, the main idea of this painting was to show you how you blend this color, how to get this set of color shade. So let me just repeat, let me just give you a recap of what we did in this class today. So what we did in the big thing, we took the canvas, we had put a masking tape, that was the first step. Now what was the second step was to align the colors in a circular fashion and we went from lighter shade to the darker shade. So how did we go? We go with, we went with white, then lemon yellow, then cadmium yellow. And then you can like put orange, like permanent orange, but we did not use permanent orange. What we used, we used vermilion red. And we tried to merge vermilion red and cadmium yellow to give, bring this orange shade. But if you give orange here, it would get too much of orange and red shade, which we did not want kids. Then what we did, we took cadmium red then we took cadmium red and then later between cadmium red and purple what we took we took burnt cena brown so the color which comes between purple and red is brown so we took that brown shade here not too much of brown because if you take too much of brown it's going to look very weird and we don't want that to uh, we don't want to spoil our painting so take a little amount of brown and then blend the red and brown together and then later the purple. Now, the reason why I used white with the purple was I wanted that to have, you know, it's looking so beautiful. This is dark here and uh, a bit of light shade really adds a bit of, you know, spark to your painting. So I just used, used white between the blue and the purple to merge it, to blend it so that it looks really beautiful. If you have purple shade, uh, you can use it directly. Like I had deep magic and deep magenta is really very deep and dark. So I, I used uh, white alternately so that, you know, it gets uh, merged properly and that's how beautiful it's looking like. See? So that was the end of the class. I hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed my class. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Do watch my videos till end because uh, that's going to... Uh, give you a nice insight about painting and craft because my paintings and my craft always have the detailed information i never skip a part or never skip a portion to it because uh, i just want to pass it on what i know so do watch my videos till end because that's really going to benefit you and me as well me in a sense with the watch time and you in a sense with the craft ideas and the painting ideas so that's how it uh, it goes about and uh, I will come up, come back again next Sunday, same time, same place. Till then, stay safe, stay happy and keep painting, keep thinking about, you know, new things in life and uh, start developing something which you like, really like doing, do something which you are really passionate about and that's going to give you a lot of, lot of stress, you know, stress buster. Uh, to be honest, uh, my uh, six months till I started my YouTube journey, it was not even. I had a lot of, you know, uh, things going in back in my life. But uh, to be honest, let me tell you that I never kept my painting aside. I never gave up on my craft. I always kept on doing, still kept on doing. And to be honest, I initially thought, you know, uh, that uh, 
uh, I will not be able to do it. I need to uh, leave the idea of crafting and painting. I need to concentrate on family and uh, work. But then, to be honest, that was so stressful those days. And doing painting, making those crafts really made me and made me and my mind to get relaxed and get focused on my life. And really, 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 it helped me because, see, if you do a painting, if you do a craft, it's it hardly takes an hour or so. See, today's class was just one hour. But in this one hour, you painted something, you were happy about it, you got to know something good. You did something, uh, you know, unique in the entire day and that will really make you feel refreshed. And that's the idea of living life. So a lot of that's, I think, too much on life and, and, and craft. So let me end my classes here. I hope you liked my video, my classes. Keep attending my classes. And if you have any questions or concerns, do keep post, uh, do post your comments and I do read it and I'll get back to you. Till then, thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Stay happy. Bye-bye.